Welcome to a supercut for the Things You Missed series. Today, we'll be going through all parts of Mount Jalmir. If this is your first supercut, let me quickly address why I'm doing this so you don't need to worry that I'm just regurgitating old content for the views. That is not at all what this channel is about. I just want to make the guides as clear and fun as possible for you. So I realized, why am I making you watch three or four videos for certain areas when I could bundle them all into one big video for your convenience and pleasure? Hence, the supercut. So if at any point throughout this video I talk about in the next part, for example, I've just left that in because without it, the video wouldn't sync up and you may have missed some vital footage. Now that you know that, please sit back, relax and enjoy. On today's episode of the things you may have missed in Elden Ring, we're going to start covering Mount Gelmir, finally picking up that map, and after a few caves and boss fights and some very juicy items, we'll be finishing up at the entrance to the Volcano Manor. We're going to immediately jump into the first tip because I was invaded straight away by Anastasia Tarnished Eater whilst I was still trying to set up for the video. So once we've defeated her, I can show you exactly where we are on the map. She'll also drop her sacred butchering knife for you. And now, as you can see, all I did off screen was start at the Road of Iniquity side path, Site of Grace, followed the road down to the southwest, picked up the Bridge of Iniquity, Site of Grace, followed the main road along, and now I'm just here on the map. So once you've defeated her, you can come into the shack here and also grab yourself the Golden Vow, and then carry on heading west down the road, and at the end of this broken bridge is a Stone Sword Key. I'm now going to walk back to this Site of Grace, and I'll call out and show you if there are any important items along the way. And whilst I'm doing that, if it's your first time here and you enjoy this kind of content, please consider subscribing to the channel, and if you like the video, please give it a like and let me know in the comments. As we're running back along this path, you'll see there are a bunch of abductor virgin enemies you need to be very careful of. They're hard enough by themselves, but if you're unlucky and not too aware of your surroundings, you can easily aggro three of them at once. So I'm just going to mount up and run through the area, grabbing all the loot as we go. So just where you've got two of them in close succession here, you can get yourself five explosive great bolts and a golden rune eight. A little bit further back down the road, you've got six throwing daggers. And where you see this one fighting two soldiers, you can pick up some arteria leaf. And then round the back of this rock is three blood rows. At this point, I end up getting summoned to another player's world to help defend them against a bloody finger. I was going to cut this out of the video, but I'll leave this in because it's quite an entertaining fight to watch and it gives me a minute to waffle on at you. So I entered into the world and both of the bloody fingers were fighting each other and I end up killing both of them. So whilst you're watching me do that, I'd also love to ask you to follow me on other channels as well. In the coming week or so, I'm going to start streaming on Twitch again so we can do some live playthroughs on there together. And if you want to keep up to date with channel updates, make sure you head over and follow me on Twitter. And for a few behind the scenes photos here and there, we also have an Instagram. Links to all them channels are down in the description, and it would mean so much to me if you'd go and follow me on my other channels to help the channel grow. Thank you so much. And now this fight's ended, we'll go into the next tip. Now that you've grabbed the items from this area, start heading back the way we came, run past all the abductor virgins, and you can sneak up to this ladder here and just beeline it for the top of the cliff. Once you get to the top of the ladder, Turn left and you'll see a load of golden runes on these tombs here. There'll be a somber smithing stone 6 on the corpse in this chair right on the edge of the cliff. And then you can also activate this site of grace. We'll rest here and I'll meet up with you again for the next tip. As you start heading west towards this tower, you'll see a battlefield with a load of soldiers mourning their dead. Kill them all. Kill them till they're dead. Help them join their friends. And as I'm clearing them out, actually, great tip for you here. Use any items that increase your item discovery, such as the Silver Fell Foot. And also, I believe, Arcane. The Arcane stat increases your discovery as well. There's also probably another one or two items that will boost your item discovery I'm forgetting about. And the reason you want to do this, this is a great farming spot for smithing stones. These guys will drop smithing stones 3, 4, and 5 quite frequently. And there's loads of them in a big group and they're really easy and really quick to kill. So if you need to farm some mid-game smithing stones, this is a fantastic area to do so. Once you've had your fun and you've got all the loot, head a bit further up and you can kill this mad pumpkin head as well. Now you can head all the way to the top of the tower, grabbing the fire arrows halfway up, and then you can loot the pulley bow right at the top. 
Clear out the rest of the guards and you can loot the sacramental buds and the volcano stones if you want. And now as you come right to the edge here, you'll see a load of rainbow stones scattered along. And a message that says rainbow stones lead the way to riches. I call bullshit. <laughs> If you head just to the other side of this massive rock, you'll see Patches hiding in the bushes. Oh, don't, don't mind me, go about your business, he says. Oh, you might want to go check out the shimmering. Hmm, hmm. It's quite fun to do it. I love Patches cutscenes. In my first playthrough, I did do this, but I'm deliberately going to ignore him and avoid it because it's then going to be easier for me to show you the natural progression route because spoiler alert here for anyone that wants to skip the next five seconds he will sneak up behind you and yeet you off the cliff and then you're in a completely different area that we'll be visiting ourselves in our own time later on in the series so we're going to ignore patches and move on to the next tip before we move into the next area whilst we're on the map here I just wanted to explain that even though it looks like we are kind of cutting through the middle of this area and we are missing things, we are doing this in illogical order and we'll be revisiting the areas that we've gone past in later videos. Because this is such a mountainous region, there's lots of different levels, so the areas that it looks like I've missed on the map are actually below us. And then right over to the northeast here, there's a huge area that I'm circling and that's a whole separate area itself, that's the Shaded Castle. So once we've done Mount Gelmir, and we'll probably do Volcano Manor first as well, then we'll come back and do the Shaded Castle afterwards. So now that I've talked you through that, we'll keep heading southeast. Before long, you'll come to a pack of wolves and some loot that you can grab. I was going to just run past them all, but I noticed that one of them has got the glowing eyes. And for anyone that doesn't know, enemies with glowing eyes give you 10 times the amount of runes that they usually give you. So this direwolf here just gave me over 2,000 runes. And then a little bit further along still, we'll now be at the entrance to the Gelmir Heroes Cave. So open the door, take the lift down, and I'll meet you down there. This is a monster of a cave, and quite a difficult one as well, because it requires navigating a lot of traps. Specifically the giant chariots that can one-shot you depending on your health and resistances. So once you come down, I'll do my best to talk you through where you need to go and what you need to do. As soon as you come into this room, run down, you'll see the chariot spawn in right at the end of the room, and two skeletons will run at you from either side. You can then go and hide in one of the holes that the skeletons just came out of, and fend the skeletons off as the chariot goes past you. Then once either you or the chariot has dealt with the skeletons, wait for it to go down and then come back up again, and as it's coming up and going past you, sprint past it, go down and jump into the little cubby hole on the right where there's a skeleton archer. Deal with him and then wait for it to go all the way down and back up again. This time it will stop right outside your room. So now you can run down with it following just behind it. A skeleton will launch out towards you from the left. By the time he picks himself up, the chariot will come past and annihilate him. So wait here while it does that. When it comes past you on the way back down, follow it down even further still. Then you can run and hide in the room on the right here with another skeleton in. Wait for the next time that the chariot goes up, because this will give you longer to reach the next destination. Now you can run down, hop over the lava and into the room on the left here. You can grab the Grave Glove Wart 7, then head into this room with a load of wandering nobles and a few pages. So we'll deal with the enemies and then we'll move on to the next area. There's a weapon right at the end of the room we just come from that I very nearly forgot to call out to you. So before you progress through any further, what you actually want to do is come back on yourself, wait for the chariot to go up to the top of the hallway, and you can roll all the way down through the lava. Don't worry, the chariot won't follow you all the way down, and the lava really doesn't do that much damage. Once you've rolled all the way to the bottom, you can grab some more glove wart on the right, then head all the way to the left, and you'll grab yourself the ringed finger hammer, which is genuinely a giant finger. This thing is disgusting. You hold the bloody stump. Its special ability makes the finger swell up and flick out. It's absolutely grim. Like, what the fuck is that? Okay, once you've made that detour and grabbed the ringed finger weapon, as I say, come back into this room and clear out all the enemies if you haven't already. There's some more glove wart that you can grab, and then up above will be one of the fire-breathing imp statues. 
smack it to make it go down and then as you're coming out and into this next area be very careful when you poke your head out because a chariot will fly past then you can turn right and go up to the top of this corridor and grab yourself a stone sword key if you time it well you can run back into the room you were just in and not get walloped like i did now start making your way down this corridor timing each little sprint with the movements of the chariot as you did the first time and then once you've gone past the second cubby hole as you're running across this bridge if you're very careful you can drop off the right hand side here and onto this little ledge if you're struggling with this drop and you keep falling into the lava there is another way to traverse this area if you time your sprints well you can just run all the way down with the chariot using the same technique we have done up to this point some people find that method easier i find the jumping onto the ledge method easier and once we're down here you'll see a bloodhound knight with his back turned to you once you've taken him out you will get the bloodhound knight armor set and you can then loot the corpse that was just in front of him and get the Gelmir armor set at the same time as well. Two armor sets for the price of one. Now jump up this ladder and what we need to do to progress to the next area is actually jump onto these wooden beams and then you can drop down and land on top of the chariot and the chariot will carry you down into the next area. But before then, what we're going to do is drop down and deal with this cemetery shade and he'll drop his weapon. It's a guaranteed drop to get the Mantis Blade once you kill him. You can go back up the ladder, come onto the beams, and as long as you time it well enough, then you can drop onto the chariot, and it'll take you down to the next area. As the chariot's taking you down to the end of this room, keep an eye on the right-hand side. You'll see there's a little hole in the wall with a lootable corpse and a ladder. As the chariot's going back up, you want to jump off as close to this as possible, and then frantically roll into this little hole. You can grab the beast blood off the corpse, up the ladder, and then through these doors. And finally, we have made it to the boss. Well done. This is not an easy dungeon. Congratulations. Luckily, there is a stake of Marika right here as well. So if you do struggle with the boss, at least you don't have to do that every single time. Come through, and you'll be faced with the Red Wolf of the Champion. He's in a much bigger arena than the other Red Wolf we fought at Rhea Lucaria. So in theory, this should be easier because you've got more room to run around and keep your distance from him. Just employ the exact same tactics that you employed for the other wolf. And once you've defeated him, you'll get the Bloodhound Knight Flaw. I don't know how you pronounce that. I'm assuming it's Flaw. And then from the chest at the end, you can grab yourself the Death Root. And we're done here. Monster of a cave. Well done. We've made it and we can move on to the next tip now. For the next tip, meet me back where Patches was just by the tower, and we're going to head northwest over this makeshift bridge. On the other side, a grafted scion will drop down. Take him out, and it'll give you an absolutely pathetic amount of runes and nothing else. And then right by this cart, you can grab yourself the scavenger's curved sword. There's nothing else to loot down here, so head up the ladder, and then immediately turn left and run all the way to the end you'll see a soldier getting absolutely murderized by these marionettes. I desperately try and save him every time I come here. Unfortunately, I don't think it's possible to. There's no loot worthy of coming over here. It's just a fun scene to see play out. And now there is absolutely nothing else on this level, so we can start heading up the ladder. You'll see there's two ladders. As you're facing them, you want to take the ladder that's on your right. Halfway up here, you can loot five grey arrows. Then climb up the next ladder. And then once you've dealt with all the enemies that you've inevitably aggroed, come to the south cliff edge, and you can drop down to where the other ladder would have taken you. And here you'll find yourself a merchant. He gives you a stone sword key and the Nomadic Warriors Cookbook 20, which lets you make volcano pots. Also a plethora of arrows and bolts, a guilty hood, and the Confessor's armor set. So grab anything that you want from here, then head up the ladder, and we'll now be right at the top of the mountain. We have finally scaled Mount Gelmir. Nearly. There's a bunch of knights up here, but no loot, so you don't have to take them out. And they're a bit more challenging than the other knights we've faced, because they're all inflicted with madness, so they can all cast madness incantations. Once you've either ignored them or taken them out, head southwest and go over this wooden bridge. You can then activate a Sight of Grace. Now, if you want, you can run back along again into this camp and grab three eyes of yellow. And to wrap up this tip, we're going to keep heading towards the northwest. 
and eventually, just behind this big demi-human, we'll find an entrance to Volcano Cave. And we'll go through Volcano Cave together right now. Volcano Cave is a very short one. There is literally two things of note here. There's a shield and the boss. I'm going to do the boss first, and then I'll come back to the entrance and show you where the shield is. Take out all the demi-humans you encounter. Then you can take the northwest exit from this room here. Grab the golden rune 6 and drop down. Take out all of these demi-humans too. And from here, do a 180. Go behind you and you'll find there's a room right there where you can find the shield. I did this cave in a really silly order and did the boss first. But as you're here, you may as well turn around, grab the shield right now. And then continue progressing through where I'm going towards the boss. So once you've got the shield, drop down again and take out the big demi-human. Then you can loot five lumps of flesh here. And facing east, you'll see the door to the boss right there. Through here is demi-human Queen Margot, who is um, pathetically weak. So once she has been absolutely annihilated, you'll be rewarded with the jar cannon. And that's it for this one. So we'll move on to the final couple of tips for this area. Teleport back to the ninth Mount Gelmir campsite that we unlocked at the start of the last tip and then prepare yourself before either climbing up the ladder to the left or jumping up the spirit spring just here. And once you're at the top, you will pretty much immediately be thrown into a boss fight with the full grown falling star beast, who is a super mega version of the falling star beast that we fought a couple of videos ago. The tactics to fight him remain exactly the same, but he's significantly tougher. Even with my Dragon Knight helping out, I ended up having to cheese him just spamming magic on horseback quite significantly. He is a tough bastard. And once you manage to fell him, you'll get a somber smithing stone six, five smithing stone six, and the falling star beast jaw, which is a crazy powerful weapon with an awesome weapon art. It's that strong that it's actually being used by certain speedrunners and no hit runners at the moment. Now that you've done that, finally, we see Volcano Manor. It looks so impressive off in the distance here, doesn't it? With the huge pool of lava sat right in the middle. So now to get out of the qua the quater, so now to get out of the crater, head west and hop off the rocks here down below. Keep following the path down. We'll encounter an invisible scarab that I try and fail to kill. So I'll ignore him for now and we'll revisit him in the next video. For now, grab a golden seed from here. And then we're going to start off by heading north and loop round to the underside of the mountain. I'm just going to ignore all the finger creepers because I really want to unlock a sight of grace and not die. And then right near the bottom, we finally have the map. Oh, it's a sight to behold, isn't it? We've had to do this entire area mapless. And then just a little bit further down, you get the road of iniquity sight of grace. And that's it. We've now unlocked the map and we've done the whole of the north of Mount Gelmir. There's a couple of areas that are technically in the north that we haven't covered yet, such as the minor Erd tree. But as I explained earlier, that's actually below us, and we'll be doing that very soon in an upcoming video. Okay. On today's episode of the things you may have missed in Elden Ring, we're back with more Mount Gelmir. Today is going to consist of an absolute ton of caves with some incredible loot and we'll be unlocking the entrance for Volcano Manor ready for the next video. Now straight away, whilst we're killing the giant worm face here, I want to talk about the new weapons that I'm using. As I mentioned in a previous video, I've switched over to a more strength focused build now and I'm dual wielding curved greatswords. Now I'm personally a believer of play this game however you want, no judgement whatsoever. And honestly, for the most part, I think the Elden Ring community is actually incredibly lovely, genuinely so lovely. But there is that element of elitism, people that say that you're not playing the game right and you just need to get good. And these people tend to agree that if you use magic, if you use ranged spells, and if you do things like blocking or parrying, you're a scrub. So I thought, okay, I'll play the game your way. It's even easier. In the three minutes that I've been going on at the start of this video, I have taken out a giant worm face and an ulcerated tree spirit whilst taking like no damage. So don't listen to the elitists, play the game however you want. With enough practice, any build is viable, every build is fun, and no build isn't playing the game properly. With that being said, this is the first time I've tried strength at all in Elden Ring, and I'm loving it. These weapons are so fucking awesome. Just obliterated these bosses. 
took practically no damage. They went down instantly. And holy crap, when you're not using like spells and ranged weapons, etc., big beefy melee weapons like this stagger enemies so quickly. So yeah, I'm probably going to continue using these for the foreseeable because they're very fun. All right, with that little rant out of the way, let me just show you exactly where I am, by the way. So we started off at the Road of Iniquity Grace site that we ended the previous video at, and we've just come north and then east to take out these two bosses. And as we head further east onto this bridge here to take out the marionettes and grab the loot, I just want to really quickly say I really hope I didn't offend anyone or rub anyone the wrong way then. Genuinely, the only point I'm trying to portray is that this game is fantastic, the community is fantastic, and if anyone is being elitist or upsetting you, just ignore them. There's no need to worry, don't let it affect your enjoyment of the game at all. So now that we've cleared up around the minor Erd tree here, we'll go back to the Road of Iniquity and head northwest to get the bit of loot around here. We cleared most of this area in the last video, so the only thing we need to do is just keep heading north back up this cliff and eventually you'll come to the scarab that I gave up trying to kill last time. A great place to kill him is on this rock because he hangs around here for a few seconds. So I'm going to put my lava pool down and then once he runs over it, I'll get the ash of war through and through. And now we'll start heading southeast and you'll see Volcano Manor directly in front of you. Looping around the other side of the big rock here, you can kill some marionettes and grab a golden rune seven. Then we can carry on right to the front of the manor take out the marionettes and the giant worm-faced ogre troll giant thing. Once they're all dead, head up the stairs and inside, and you can discover the site of grace for Volcano Manor. Now, I'm going to do nothing here at the moment, speak to no enemies, progress nothing in Volcano Manor. Just wanted to unlock a shortcut so it's nice and easy to come back to in the next video. So for now, we'll head back out again and then progress on to the next tip. For this next tip, we're going to explore our first cave of the video. So you get yourself to the Erd Tree Gazing Hill site of grace, and then head north to the Wyndham Ruins, which we briefly explored in a previous video when we took out the Tibia Marina. Head to the very northwest of these ruins and you'll see the Wyndham Catacombs. And now that we're here, let's go through the cave together. As usual, there's a bunch of bloody imps, so take them out by any means necessary. And then a little bit further into the cave, you'll come to this slightly flooded room with a load of putrid corpses and a royal knight at the end of the room. To make this quite easy for yourself, you can aggro him and then run him back into this lightning trap here and just keep zapping the lightning trap on his ass. Once you've cleared out the room, head up the ladder, avoid the trap that just fucked me in the back, take out the imp, and you'll see there's a stone sword key statue just in front of you, and that'll lead you into this little side room here where you can pick up the lightning scorpion charm. Now we're at another Now we're at another one of them moving floor rooms that we haven't seen for a while. What I'd advise doing is stepping on the floor but staying right by the entrance you've just come out of. Let it start moving up, do a 180 and there's an imp behind you. Take him out and then you can jump back on the floor and beeline it to the other end of the room. Take out the imp and the knight over there and now you can pull the lever to open the boss room for this dungeon. Now you can head back over to the other side, trigger the floor to lift up, and then hop underneath it. In here, you can deal with a load of putrid corpses, and also at the end of the room, that epic item you see on the floor is an Ancient Dragon Apostles Cookbook 1. So go and loot that, but be very careful when you do, because two crabs will spawn. I definitely, definitely didn't just die to them. You didn't see that. So we're going to gloss over the fact that just happened. And then once we teleport by our own means back to the site of grace you can now just run straight forward into the boss room which is another Erd tree burial watchdog mess him up and when he's dead you'll get 12,000 runes and glove wart pickers bell bearing one now we're done here but i'm gonna go back to the crabs for a completely unrelated reason and i'll meet you back here in the next tip we're going to head on over to the old Altus Tunnel Cave, which I've just marked on the map here now. But before that, there's one item in these ruins that I very nearly forgot to show you. So we're going to drop down into this portion of the ruins. You'll see another stone sword statue that you can unlock. And in here, once you've beaten up all the big bad skillymans, you'll get the Pearl Drake Talisman Plus One, which is awesome because it's like a jack of all trades of all the other talismans combined. It just gives you a boost to all non-physical damage negation. So now that that's done, we'll teleport back to the Erd Tree Gazing Hill site of Grace again and run through this ravine to the north, killing or ignoring all the trolls as you go past. And eventually, right at the end, blocked by another stone sword statue, is the old Altus Tunnel. So we'll head down, light the site of Grace, and continue on forwards. This is another smithing material rich dungeon. This is another very smithing stone heavy 
This is another very smithing material. Fuck, what am I trying to say? So make sure you're grabbing all the loot as you go. As always, it's absolutely full of the crystal miners. So magic attacks or blunt attacks, known as strike attacks in this game, are going to be super effective. There's only a couple of bits I'll call out specifically. In the little shack within this part of the dungeon, just after you clear out the dogs and the miners, you'll get the bolt drake talisman plus one. And then in this large room below, a bunch of royal knights will ambush you, so be very, very careful. Then once you've cleared out the area, you can grab the troll's hammer. After a few more enemies and a few more smithing stones, you'll be on to the boss fight, which is a stone digger troll. Smash his face in and you'll get his great club as a reward. We're done in this tunnel, so we'll move on to the next one. This next tip is really, really quick. Just go to the abandoned coffin site of Grace here, and in this caravan graveyard, there'll be a bunch of ogres, and the only two things of note to call out, nestled snugly between these caravans here, with the ogre on top, you can get a smithing stone five, and then further north, you'll get the ruler's mask and the ruler's robe. That's everything here, so go back to the abandoned coffin, and I'll take you on to the next area. Once you're back here, head northwest and we'll start running towards the Perfumer's Ruins. About halfway along your journey, you'll come to a Scarab. Take him out and you've got the Ash of War Sacred Order. Then as you get to the ruins, there's a ton of stuff you can loot here. So there's an Omen Killer enemy that you can take out and he will give you the Omen Killer's set. Bar the mask, the mask you pick up later in the game. And that's actually from an Omen Killer enemy in Lanedale, the Royal Capital. So if you want to know where to get the mask, go and watch that one as well. You can also grab a total of two perfume bottles here and I'll show you the locations of them as we're going through and clearing out the enemies. Killing this perfumer always awards me with the perfumer sarong, their armor. I don't know if that's a 100% drop rate or if I just got really coincidentally lucky, but you may or may not get part of their armor set by clearing out the perfumers in this region. And then in the chest here that the omen killer was just in front of, you've got the perfumers cookbook one. And when you come up to the giant orange Miranda flower here, once you've taken that out, you can break the wooden planks it was in front of and get the nascent butterfly. And you can also grab the other perfume bottle I was talking about. But before you leave, there's actually a breakable floor here. So smash through these wooden planks, come down into the room below, come down into the room below and you'll get the perfumer's talisman, which raises the potency of perfume items. Not gonna lie to you, I have never used a perfume item in this game. If you have, let us all know which ones are good, are they are they worth using or not. So now, we'll move on to the next tip and into the next cave. From the perfumer's ruins, just go a tiny smidge to the southwest and you'll see the entrance to this cave in no time at all. So let's head through the doors together and we'll be in the unsightly catacombs. This one is super straightforward. Just take out the Misbegottens and follow the only path that you can for now. A little ways into the dungeon, you'll see some Grave Glove Wart at the end of this room, but be careful because you will be ambushed by a couple of Misbegottens as you go to loot it. Once they're dealt with, come down the stairs here, and then right at the bottom, you'll see another Grave Glove Wart in the center of the room here. It looked really suspicious. I thought the floor was gonna break when I walked on top of it, so I was very gingerly walking around the edge, but it's fine, you can go and grab it. And now you will already find yourself at the boss room so we'll backtrack slightly to actually go and unlock it as you're walking back this may or may not happen to you but i was ambushed by an ogre so i took him out and then when you get to these stairs that we just walked down you actually want to hop off here and make sure you're using lock on because a few of these misbegottens are just playing dead and it will identify for you which ones are alive and which ones are dead so that you can take them all out then you can loot the winged misbegotten ashes and now head on up and you can pull the lever. Around the edge of the floor that this lever is on, you can also get yourself a rune arc and the prattling pate apologies. Now you can hop back down where the ogre just ambushed us and head into the boss room. You'll face Perfumer, Trisha, and a Misbegotten Warrior. I pretty much one-shot her, and the Misbegotten Warrior was taken down not too soon after she was, and then you'll be rewarded with her as a summon. So now that we've cleared out that cave, we'll move on to yet another cave. Now you want to head back to the Wyndham Catacombs, head outside, and then drop down the ledges here to the southwest. You can grab a Sight of Grace, and then keep running north up the ravine. You'll get the Ash of War Barrage from this Scarab. You can grab a Golden Seed a bit further up the ravine, along with a bunch of other loot, including a Smithing Stone 5 and loads of Volcanic Stones. Now up here is a few items to loot, along with a load of bastard basilisks. 
Be careful not to die to the death blight as you take them out, and then turn around and just a little bit back on yourself, up this ledge, you'll find another stone sword gargoyle, which will open the way to Seethe Water Cave. If you have any way to consistently cleanse yourself of poison, such as the flame cleanse me incantation, this cave will be much easier because most of it is completely covered in poison. There's a bunch of side paths, but none of it is particularly missable and none of it is interesting at all. So I'll just leave you to go through most of the cave at your leisure. The one bit I will call out is just as you drop down this poison waterfall, head into the southwest cave, keep following the path round. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Dealing with the rats and the poison casters as you go, you can loot a golden rune 7 here, then further down into this poison pool, you'll see a load of casters along with a giant Miranda Bloom, and in here you can grab the Mushroom Armor Set, which is incredibly good for poison resistance. Now continue on through the cave until you get to the giant hole in the floor here. Carefully drop down the ledges. You can clear out the rats halfway down and get the poison bone darts. Then at the bottom you'll come to the boss room which is two kindreds of rot. And then once you have absolutely destroyed their faces in with two massive swords and practically two shot them both, you'll be rewarded with the Kindred of Rot's Exaltation, which, if memory serves, allows you to do bonus damage when near poison or scarlet rot which is a very unique mechanic and one that can come in very handy in certain areas of the game. We're done in this cave, so I'll meet you back outside. Once you're back outside, head west through the ravine. I'll gloss over this run because there's no loot worth mentioning. But when you get to the end and you're out of the ravine again, you can grab the Seethe Water Terminus Site of Grace. And assuming this fort is pronounced the same as Blythe, you'll currently be looking at Fort Lythe. And we'll be covering this fort, along with a few villages and shacks to the south of Volcano Manor, in a few videos time. We'll cover Volcano Manor itself first, then we'll come back and mop up the surrounding area. So now you've unlocked this Site of Grace, we can move on to the last tip for this video. The final tip is yet another cave! This area is just riddled with caves. So join me back at the abandoned coffin grey site, and we're now just going to head north and slightly east through this lake, and in no time at all you'll come to the Sage's Cave. This cave is just full of skeletons that are going to try and ambush you from every angle, along with being full of chests and hidden walls. So pretty much straight away you'll see the cave goes nowhere. Smack the wall in front of you, it was an illusion. Let's go through. Pretty much immediately ambushed by a spearman, by a spear wheel by a spear wielding skelly boy kill him dead and then just to the right is another hidden wall you can loot the two chests here and then carry on a little bit further there's another wall to destroy on your left here a spear wielding skeleton and a bunch of bandit skeletons dual wielding their curved blades will run out at you deal with them as they're coming out then you can head in where they were and grab a load of loot being five silver pickled fowl feet a black hood a candle tree wooden shield and a nascent butterfly. Now, further down the cave we go. There's a load of skeletons in this room. Try and kill them a little bit more effectively than I did. And then the one in the corner here that didn't charge me along with the rest of them. As I smack him to pieces, I reveal yet another illusionary wall in that chest as a stone sword key. Then we'll come further through still and grab some dragon wound grease and the raptor talons from these chests. Hop over this ledge, smash through yet another wall. You can now loot the raptor's black feathers and a skeletal mask. Smash through this wall and it'll lead you into a boss room with Necromancer Garrus. Now there are two bosses in this cave and I could have sworn this one was the Black Knife Assassin. So I summon my spirit because I really need him for that other boss fight and you'll see why in a minute. But I'm quite glad that I summoned him for this boss fight as well because this Necromancer was tougher than I remember. He nearly had me a couple of times and he's constantly summoning his own guys throughout the fight as well. So this was a tougher fight than I thought it would be. Fair play to him. GG, gave me a run for my money and once you do, manage to fuck him up you'll get the family heads weapon now run back through the cave and head the other way around this waterfall and you'll come to the other boss room here you'll face the black knife assassin that i just mentioned a second ago if anyone knows if there's any other ways to reveal this guy please let us all know in the comments but he is completely invisible and the reason i summon my spirit ashes in this fight is because for some reason the ai can track him at all times so it gives you a much better idea of where he is trying to take this guy out one-on-one -on -one. 
I have no idea. I just get fucked every single time. <laughs> and once you manage to take him out, you'll get the concealing veil. We're done in this cave, and that means we are done with this area. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope it was helpful. I hope you had fun. I hope you have an amazing day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.